On Saturday the 29th of May, motor vessel Balmoral arrives at Donaghadee to take passengers on a day trip to Peel in the Isle of Man. After Balmoral left the coast, I went to the bridge to meet the captain. Uh, you're Captain Kit Lee. That's, That's right. right. And uh, the, the Balmoral um, has had new engines into her recently. How, how do you find these engines now after you've had them for a year or so? Very, very good. It's made a, a few difference to the handling characteristics of the ship. And uh, also the, the way we approach piers with the old engines, direct acting, two-stroke diesels, then we could come in appreciably faster for two reasons. First of all, um, the speed of control between uh, me ringing the telegraph and given a good driver on the engine, um, him reading the telegraph um, and interpreting how fast I want the movement, which you could do. Um, if I ring the telegraph quickly, then he gives me a very fast movement with plenty of power straight away. Puts lots of fuel into it manually, that was the old system. Um, but the new system is slightly different. We don't have that instantaneous response anymore um, because there's about a three second delay. It's an automatic system, we have to engage gearboxes now because these engines are not direct reversing. They run in the same direction all the time and any change of direction of the shaft is fed through the gearbox. So to connect it all up, that takes about three seconds. Three seconds doesn't sound very long, but when a pier is coming towards you at five knots, that's a really long time. Yeah. That's the difference between a large bang and yeah. a smooth landing alongside. Uh, I noticed in Dalhadi you kept the engines running slow ahead all the time. What was the reason for that? Yeah, it was just one engine ahead. One engine. That's because we, co we cannot land the full body of the ship alongside um, and get any decent leverage. The ship is balanced at its midpoint alongside the end of the knuckle. And so to prevent the ship shearing around and going in and out, the ends are pinned by the ropes, but then to hold the mid-body of the ship alongside and to keep it tight alongside, if we need some uh, some forward thrust just to pull against the ropes, it's just balancing the forces yeah. between the ropes yeah. and power from on. I, no I notice uh, around the ship various modifications, uh, improvements I from, from last year, I assume you're always updating things where you find it yeah. necessary. Um, the, the dining saloon, I noticed there was quite a difference to it this time. Absolutely. That's, uh, that's our current pride and joy. Last year it was the engines. This year we were in receipt of uh, further heritage lottery funding. And that's enabled us to uh, put some capital investment into the ship and just update the lounge. And what we're trying to do, the heritage lottery funding is, is goes towards keeping the ship as original as we possibly can and in keeping with the period. So we're aiming for an early 1950s, late 1940s look. So you'll notice if you look in the forward bar, that theme of the wooden pillars has been carried through into the, the dining area. And it's also, but it has been updated at the same time, so the servery area is all stainless steel, very shiny, new, easy to keep clean. Um, and we try to blend the modern with the new so that it's, it's more or less a seamless thing. You wouldn't look at it and think, good lord, that's far, far too new. And we don't go for a totally chrome finish look. But we, we've tried to remain faithful to the period in which the ship was built. I notice you make good use of your trips. Uh, rather than just leaving the ship alongside during the afternoon, you go off for a little trip that's around right. the Calf of Man. That's right. We, we, we work on the principle that any port we go into, there must be some people there who maybe would like a, a boat trip. So instead of just sitting there, we'll do a little cruise along the coast. Because it's, it's an interesting thing, and it's true anywhere in the world really, the people who live on a piece of land have very seldom seen it from seaward. Yeah. A minimum number of people often have, so this is an opportunity for people to have a bit of a look inwards at where they live. Uh, and finally, uh, we're, we're up in the wheelhouse now. Ha ha have you had any improvements in the wheelhouse recently, or has it um, stayed the same? Over the last couple of years, new bits of equipment really, those are the only things. Um, this is a relatively new radar. We 
have a, again a two year old radar fitted in the back there in the charge room. Um, other than that, no, not really. Everything is as it was. We've repaneled a bit of this just to make it look a bit nicer. Yeah. We're, we're having a little look at this man on the wheel. What, what's his name? What's My name is Jan and I'm from Poland. Oh, you're I am joined to the ship uh, a few weeks ago. So, that's a new period in my uh, sea career. As so far, this is very, very good. I'm happy, like all of us. Uh, especially that we have very good captain. <laughs> you have to say that. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 that is my private opinion. It certainly does. <laughs> As well, so there's nothing what I say just because of captain. But yeah. anyways, yes, as so far, uh, everything goes smoothly, I guess. What, what were you doing previous to being on this ship? Uh, I've been also on the big passenger vessels on the Caribbean Sea. Much, much bigger than this one, but it's quite interesting. She's uh, 55, but in very good condition. It's, it's as I say, something... And, New sensation, very very positive. Yeah, nice people. I mean about passengers as well. Yeah. So it's nice to work. So so you were on the big ships. Uh, what before you joined this ship, you, you you maybe didn't know what it was going to be like. Why, why did you decide to come from a big ship down to such a small ship? Uh, you know, because I work with British since uh, '94. Then, uh, unfortunately, company where I work with wasn't able to employ me any longer so I have to change <laughs> for some period of the time but as soon as I uh, get this uh, opportunity to come back and work with British I did it so for that reason I am again here Do you prefer to work with the British? Yes, yes definitely the, the only nation with which I can work well, the only people, uh, I mean, in my country even, uh, you know, as we say in Poland, where is more uh, of us than two, there is some problems. <laughs> uh. As we neared the island, a flock of seabirds began to follow the boat. Among them was a single gannet. This beautiful bird is the biggest seabird in the North Atlantic with a wingspan of up to 2 meters. It feeds mainly on mackerel, sprat, herring and sand eels, which it catches by plunge diving at 60 miles per hour into the sea. Able to remain at sea in any weather, gannets come ashore only to breed and luckily for us, Around 100,000 gannets choose to breed on the Bass Rock, one of the 12 wildlife wonders of the world. Peel, locally known as Sunset City, and the Peelites to enjoy the afternoon sun as we return to the famous MV Balmoral for our voyage home.